Today I'm taking a look at Disney Food Blog's video all about scams on Disney Cruise Line, so let's jump right in and see what we got. Starting with the social media contests. This has been a cruise scam problem for many, many, many years now, and the problem has only gotten worse over time. When you're on social media, you might come across a seemingly innocent post telling you to like, share, and tag X number of friends in the comments so you can be eligible to win a free cruise. At first, they may seem like a dream come true, but if you win this so-called contest, the dream quickly fizzles into more of a nightmare. This seems like it should be obvious at this point, but clearly they're getting people to fall for it so they keep trying the scam. If you see something on social media that seems too good to be true, it most likely is. You're basically never going to be given a cruise for free, even if it appears that way on the surface. Just use common sense and honestly I'd say avoid all social media giveaway contests that aren't directly from Disney Cruise Line itself, just as a general rule. Next, be wary of those unreliable excursions. So the Disney Cruise Line travels to all sorts of overseas destinations, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, Europe, Mediterranean, the list goes on. For many of us, these are once in a lifetime bucket list destinations. So it makes sense you'd wanna book an excursion to go on a guided tour around your port of call and see some of those popular or even hidden gem locations around the city. Because when on earth are you gonna get the chance to do this again, right? But be careful when you book third party excursions that are outside the Disney Cruise Line's realm of influence. 1000% agree on this one. Another general rule, honestly, just never do third party excursions. If your excursion is not through Disney, you are completely out of luck if something goes wrong. So if you're somewhere that you're unfamiliar with, you're putting your whole vacation and honestly even your safety in the hands of a random tourism company you found online. Also, if you're late coming back to the ship and it's due to an excursion that is not run through Disney, that ship will absolutely not wait for you. It's just not worth the risk. You should only be doing excursions directly through Disney. It's not the time to be searching for the cheapest alternative. Even if you decide to skip out on the port excursions, you still need to be on high alert when you enter an overseas port of call, because these cruise ship cities can take advantage of your vacation vulnerabilities. This is especially true in cities where bartering is a big thing. Yep, these locations can be beautiful with lots of white sandy beaches and tropical flair, but if you're trying to browse the cultural markets, many of the shopkeepers might try to pressure you into making a sale you're not comfortable making. Another one I definitely agree with, this is really one of the few downsides of any cruise the ports that you stop at are typically locations that are very centered around the tourism money brought in by the cruises, which means that a ton of local sellers are going to crowd the port entrance and you basically become a target the second you step off the ship. Some sellers are legit, but many will say absolutely anything to get you to come give them your money. So just be mindful, be smart. Okay, you've made it to your overseas port, but now how are you supposed to get around? Well, on Disney's private islands, it's easy to get from place to place thanks to their free tram services and bike rent. But when you're wandering around somewhere like Nassau or Jamaica or Barbados, it's easy to get caught like a deer in headlights. How on earth do you make it from your ship and over to those sightseeing locations you've dreamed about visiting? Because believe it or not, it is totally, totally fine for you as a cruise guest to jump in a bus or a taxi or whatever you want to get over to a sightseeing location. Overseas ports will have taxi cab services and their own rideshare apps that you might want to look into downloading to use during your trip. But I know you're going to get tired of me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Do your research and make sure the service you find is one you're comfortable with using. This one kind of goes back with the excursion rule from before, my recommendation is still doing everything directly through Disney or at least staying within walking distance of the ship. And now let's talk about how Disney might hurt your feelings with upcharges that feel like a scam without being an actual scam. First of all, the Wi-Fi charges. Staying connected to the real world while you're out at sea may not be a number one priority for you, but if it's still somewhat of a priority, then you might be shocked to find out how much you're going to have to pay for continued social media and internet privileges while you're on the ship. Yeah, the Wi-Fi is crazy expensive, but I honestly kind of enjoy that it pretty much forces you not to be on your phone, it really helps you to be in the moment and get to know and love the ship a lot better. But if you do need to stay in contact with the real world, like with family or anything where you don't have a choice and you absolutely need it, yeah, that price is going to sting. Now, in the Disney Cruise Line bubble, favoritism is afoot. While many of Disney's cruise activities, like the Broadway-style performances and trivia games and rotational dining and sketch classes, etc., are automatically included with your stateroom price, other, more premium activities are going to require you to make advance reservations and pay extra. This includes cruise extras like adult-exclusive dining, beverage-tasting seminars, bibbidi-bobbidi-boutique, character picnics and tea parties, port adventures, private cabana 
Cabanas with Castaway Key and several spa and fitness services. The It's a Small World Nursery also requires advanced reservations, as does the free princess gathering meet and greet that happens in the atrium at select times during your cruise. Now remember, Small World Nursery is not the kids' clubs. The kids' clubs are for older kids, Small World Nursery is for babies, and that's why it costs more. Now, if you wanna make reservations for one of these extra activities, first-time cruisers will be able to start booking them 75 days prior to their sale date. But here's the downside of that, for new cruisers at least. Booking extra activities is done on a loyalty basis, meaning people who have sailed more get first dibs on these premium experiences. So while it is true that it sucks when you can't sign up for something because it's already sold out and you never got a shot because the people higher up on the loyalty rankings took it first, I do understand why Disney does this. It's way cheaper from a marketing perspective to get a customer to come back using these incentives than it is to try to convince a new customer to try a Disney cruise for the first time. So any incentive they can give someone to keep coming back time and time again, they're going to utilize it. So it's a slightly harsh reality, but it's one I can live with. At the end of the day, most of these situations come down to common sense, and it's always good to have them brought to the forefront of your mind to make you a smart and safe cruiser. Great video from Disney Food Blog.